Chapter 12. 12.25 a.m. Looks like the kidnappers made a big mistake. The girl in the trunk was Detective Jowd's daughter, Camilla, not the minister's daughter. When I got, got back to the justice minister's office, things were getting even more out of hand. The devastated man was being grilled by the fiery detective lady. I told Lynn what I would found out about the kidnapping. That it wasn't the justice minister's daughter who had been abducted. That the kidnappers had been holed up in Camilla's old house. And that they sensed my presence and were already gone. Camilla? Why do they have Camilla? Her father isn't the stupid isn't the stupid old justice minister. I think the stupid old part is a little uncalled for. Looks like the kidnappers made a mistake somehow. The poor girl. Kidnapped for the ransom of her own father's execution. It's just too much. It's a cruel twist of fate, I agree. And then there are those other twists, too. Like the kidnappers winding up and using Camilla's old house as their hideout. There's no way it could just be a coincidence. And them sensing my presence. They seem to know about the powers of the dead. I just don't understand any of it. I told you before, detective. I want you to stand back. Who cares about distance at a time like this? Look, Mr. Minister, it wasn't your daughter that was kidnapped. Don't try to pretend you didn't hear what we were saying. Oh! How can I believe in you? I'm a realist! Please! If you don't believe what we say, see for yourself. Just call home and... I tried calling a hundred times! My wife won't answer! She won't? It's complicated. Oh, why does life have to be such a complicated thing? But if she doesn't answer, does that mean everything's normal? It doesn't prove it! And I'm being watched! I can't have the police go check for me! Besides, if the execution isn't carried out tonight, a hostage will be killed! What difference does it make that it's not my daughter? That's a good point. Woo-wee, that's quite a pickle, Mr. Minister. Quite a pickle. Yep. I thought so. Miss me, baby? Inspector Cabanella! That never gets old. That never gets old. I have a little report for you, Mr. Minister. That's a deep ass bow. The escaped prisoner has been apprehended. Thought you might like to see him, so here he is. Detective Jowd? Detective Jowd, I'm sorry. I tried. I know that you're innocent. I just can't prove it. I'm so sorry. Lynn, please, don't apologize to me. Ah, the beautiful love between a teacher and student. It brings a tear to my eye. You knew, didn't you, Inspector Cabanella? The execution was tonight. I don't believe I had any obligation to tell you. And you're fine with this? I mean, you know as well as I do. Detective Jowd could never have done such a thing. Ha 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 ha. Oh, come on now, baby. I know no such thing. 
I know two things to be true and two things only. One, he was given the death penalty. And two, he tried to escape. What else could I do but haul him in, baby? If that's the case, why did you bring him here? Whatever do you mean, young lady? He escaped from prison, right? So why didn't you just take him back to the prison? I think you only brought him here. To brag about your accomplishment. Isn't that right, Inspector? For your own selfish reasons? Ooh. She might be a little bit too on point there. So are all those rumors about you true? That the only thing you care about is a spotless record? Is that more important to you than saving a friend? He's uh, a bit quiet now. Everybody has certain principles they can't go back on, including moi. You'll understand that someday, baby. That's enough, Lin. But Detective Jowd! I'm a death row inmate who escaped from prison. This is how it should be. What? talk to the minister my poor amelie is she all right actually the girl who was kidnapped is named camilla why is a dream talking to me in my head again wait a minute amelie could that be the amelie next door yes i think so wow i didn't know the justice minister lived next door no not me my wife it's uh complicated yeah i bet it would be pretty hard to admit she left him the minister's wife ran away from him maybe they grew apart but what with him being so busy yeah i bet you're right please stop gossiping about me inside my own head <laughs> yeah that would be absolutely awful wouldn't it According to what I heard, Amelie was supposed to go to some sort of lesson tonight. Those horrible kidnappers, they were lying in wait for her. But Amelie didn't go out after all, she couldn't. She had a fever. Ah, huh. and so the kidnappers grabbed Camilla by mistake instead? Apparently, Amelie and Camilla are about the same age. The kidnappers must have gotten the two of them mixed up. It's my fault. If I hadn't asked Camilla to do that errand for me, this never would have happened. Oh, right. You asked her to bring the music box. Camilla. Tell her that the music box is in the bush. Tell her the music box is in the bush. Dummy. So, Mr. Ghost, we meet again. I hear something happened. Something about a kidnapping? Some kidnappers are saying they abducted the justice minister's daughter. That's terrible. What's their demand? The carrying out of your execution tonight. <laughs> I had no idea I was so hated. But the minister doesn't have to worry. I die, and it's all over. Very simple. It's not that simple! Why not? Because it isn't really the minister's daughter who got kidnapped. It's Camilla. What? Camilla? Yes, your daughter. I checked it out for myself. I'm positive. No, it can't be. And by the way, Camilla told me something interesting. She said the one who killed her mother five years ago was Camilla herself. What? What are you talking about? Don't listen to him! I'm the one who shot her! I'm the one who shot Alma! And when I'm executed tonight, that will be the end of it! Camilla won't have to suffer anymore after tonight! For a capable detective, you say some incredibly misguided things. You dying isn't going to end that girl's suffering. It'll just bring her new suffering. 
The only person's pain this execution is going to ease is yours. Oh, damn. Sissel spitting out the facts. Is it true what Camilla said? Why don't you tell us what you know? Ah, this is too intense. The murder five years ago. To be honest, I still don't understand why what happened that day. It was my wife's Alma's birthday. We came home from work and she went in first. Mom! Mom! What was that noise? I looked for the shooter, but there was nobody to be found. There was nobody there besides Alma and Camilla. Just the two of them. So the little lady's mother died right in front of her. Oh my! That's so horrible! Camilla told me about it. She was crying. I bet... I wonder if there's a way we can go back five years in time <laughs> and prevent this whole thing from happening. I don't know, would that be kind of cheap though? She said the contraption she made did something it wasn't supposed to. Made an impossible move. An impossible move? <gasps> Somebody tampered with it, I bet. Let's talk about the powers of the dead. It's been five years since then. I stopped thinking about it. I shot Alma. There's no other explanation. That's what I convinced everyone of. Even me. Tonight, you showed up and gave me an explanation I never would have thought of before. The powers of the dead, right? That day, in that room, powers that I didn't understand were at work. And if that's the case, it clears up all the mysteries. Maybe not all. There are a couple of people who... Other people who know about those powers. Right? Everybody here. And the lamp... And there was a cat. Oh, and her. Right, she can sense... She can sense us. Does that mean she has died before? The kidnappers who abducted Camilla knew about those powers. You can only know about the powers unless you die. This is no ordinary kidnapping. Looks like my wife's case isn't coming to an end after all. I'm the only one who thought it was. Detective Jowd. There's still time before dawn. A little anyway. How about you see this case through to the end before you die? <sighs> an impossible move. Camilla was a quiet little girl, but she was good with her hands. She was a little genius in making elaborate toys and contraptions. But there were two very strange points about that contraption. The first was, of course, the firing of that gun. Right. That was an antique gun I'd had on display for years. So it wasn't part of the little lady's original design. Of course it wasn't! It was supposed to be a surprise for her mother's birthday! And the other strange point was the movement of that cupid. Cupid? It was supposed to shoot its arrow without turning around. Somebody made a change to the contraption's design and then manipulated it. I don't know what to say. I didn't have time to think things through then. All I knew was I had to protect Camilla. I made a small adjustment to the scene and turned myself in. What adjustment? What kind of adjustment? The gun, of course. The gun, eh? Come to think of it.
There was no gun there, just a picture hanging on the wall. Of course not, because I secretly switched the gun out of that frame with the picture. I didn't believe what she told me about her contraption. But one thing was for certain, that gun was still smoking. So that gun really did shoot Alma? I hid the gun before I went to the police. You hid it? I put it in a wooden box and gave it to a certain detective. What? You mean... And that detective still thinks it's a music box. So that's what was in the box, huh? I got a different murder weapon ready to give to the police. My own pistol. And I did a few other things to make it look good. I won't go into the details. When I was all done, I turned myself in. Shit. Alright, well we gotta get that box back. Detective Jowd, is what you told us just now true? Yes, of course. In that case, there's still time. Still time? Time to solve the case that started five years ago. You didn't do it, Detective Jowd. And of course, little Camilla didn't do it either. So the true perpetrator is still out there, and I'm going to prove it! Was it... Sissel? For Camilla's sake, either it's, it's Sissel, or somebody else has those powers. Maybe the lamp? Maybe he lied, saying he didn't have them? I mean, he seemed to know quite a bit about those powers and exactly how to use them and what you can do with them, right? <sighs> but if the lamp is Amelie, but then again, how would she be here five years later after her death? Unless she has special powers. She could, the lamp could have lied to us that we would be gone by dawn. That sounds wonderful. Thank you, Detective Jowd. Lynn, where is that music box now? In Temsic Park. Camilla left it there. That gun is important evidence. You'd better go pick it up. Yes, sir. I'll go right now. Sissel, take care of Detective Jowd. And do something about the kidnapping so we can get the minister on our side. And yet again, I say, easy enough for you to say. What's going on? Deal me the deal, Mr. Deathrow inmate. A little change in plans. My daughter has been kidnapped. I can't just go off to die without doing something. But you're in our custody, don't forget. Back at the prison, everybody's waiting for you with a special seat just for you, baby. And I guess we'd better prove my innocence on the double. On the double, is it? You sound so determined, my old friend. I want to save Camilla in more ways than one. And that's all there is to it. I see, my old friend, in more ways than one. Come on, Cabanella. What say you, Mr. Minister? May we have your decision? Should the execution be carried out tonight as planned? Or should we hold off and wait for this important evidence to come in? The order still stands. Bring the prisoner back immediately and resume its enforcement. As you wish, Your Excellency. Please! Don't bow to me! And especially not that low! 
In that case, can I have one of your boys arrange a van to pick him up? Would you be so kind? Yes, sir. What is that? A chair? What? Just in case he needs it? He just... Where, do you, where did that come from? The van should take about 10 minutes, I'm guessing. Your escape tonight was brilliant. Will you show me another miracle in these last few minutes of yours, Mr. Death Row Inmate? He's telling him to get the hell out of here. Man, so many pieces to the puzzle and I just don't have all of them. Most likely, the minister won't stop the execution. Not as long as there's any small chance his daughter is the one who was kidnapped. But she isn't the one. I'm sure of it. Well, it would be great if we could prove that to the minister. Prove it? How? I doubt his wife is gonna ever going to answer that phone if we call from here. If we call from here, right. But a telephone works in both directions. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, only family members can solve a family problem. Hey, Mr. Ghost? Yes? I have to admit, I don't like depending on others. But you're the only one who can change this situation. Gee, Detective. For these past five years, Camilla is the only thing that kept me going. I can't go meekly to the chair now. I hate to ask this, but would you mind saving me? I'll try. The key to getting the Justice Minister to stop the execution is his wife and daughter. But is there a way? Excuse me, Mr. Minister? I can't hear you! La 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 la! I'm sure you heard everything we've been saying. Are you telling me you don't believe any of it? Let me speak plainly. I don't trust you. But there's somebody else whom I trust even less. Oh yeah? Who's that? Me! I can't explain your existence. It's not normal, but I'm pretty abnormal myself. So maybe you're a figment of my imagination. A delusion! Would you listen to a delusion? To be honest, I have no idea what you're talking about. I got the bit about you not trusting me, though. Good. Okay. Oh, shit. Alright. Let's get over, um... What do, what do you want to tell me? Well, hanging around here won't change anything. I've got 10 minutes before the prison van shows up. If I could just do something about the kidnapping in those 10 minutes. Okay, so I think we need to call a lady's apartment. I mean, where else would it be? The, we have the park. Sipper's office. The guard room. The basement. The chicken kitchen. Okay, let's go. Just as I thought. This little girl is safe in her bed. Murder, execution, jailbreak, betrayal, and now kidnapping. This last link in the long chain of sad fate lit a fire in Jaud's heart, and the chance to turn it all around is right here in this room. I'm getting a strange premonition. Everything that happened so far tonight has related back to me in some way. And I bet this mistaken ridden abduction does too. Oh, that's the end of the chapter. Chapter 13. Flying through this game, 12.51 AM. I visited the novelist's apartment again, hoping to be able to do something about this mistaken identity kidnapping. The 
as long as there is any possibility that it could be his own daughter who was kidnapped, I doubt the Justice Minister will call off the execution tonight. The key is... The key to dispelling the Minister's doubts is now in bed, coughing. I need to use this key before that prison van arrives to pick up our death row inmate. My darling angel, oh, just listen to that cough. You naughty thing. Did you leave your nice warm bed to go out into the night to play? A daughter after my own heart. But I must confess, I didn't even notice you were gone. I didn't go out to play. I went to buy Papa a birthday present. He said he wanted a new lighter. But that's no reason to go out this late at night. But my fever finally went down. I could barely move before that. But look what it brought you. Your fever, fever is now worse than ever. Here is to my feverish, the feverish passion of my darling angel. Yes, darling. Let's call Papa and wish him a happy birthday, even though it's already past midnight. Not tonight, Amelie. I hate you! Looks like this little girl was safe all along. I already knew that, but I'm still relieved all the same. And there's another lucky development too. Amelie wants to call her father. Now if I can just make use of that feeling somehow, that would surely bring the justice minister around. Light the lighter. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Simple. Puzzle complete. Oh no. We have to distract her somehow, I guess. Amelie, I told you you couldn't call him tonight. Why not? Listen to me, Amelie. Your father is about to make a big mistake. I want him to reconsider. What do you know about it, Mama? He's the one who's the justice minister, you know. All you do is write weird novels! Her hair! What do you mean, weird? How dare you disparage my romantic expressions! Now you've really made me angry! You really have! How do you expect me to forgive such an insult? mean mom she moved her desk closer oh lord there I'll be keeping my eye on you now so you won't do anything else mischievous just like calling your father I hate you I can hear you you know Phew, what a pair. I don't know what this family's issues are, but I do know I have to do something about this lady so Amelie can call. Open the wastebasket. Turn the knob on the lamp. Better not put out the lamp right now. Ugh. Only pour, pour oil on the flames of anger in this lady's heart. If I want to give Amelie a chance to use the telephone, I have to think of a way to keep her mother out of the way. 
pendulum. Swing harder. Ball clock. Make a chime. Turn the latch. There's a mouse. There's a valve. There's a... Uh, another latch. A dictionary. Hmm, the lady's dictionary. Wasn't this on her desk before? The poor thing. Destined to never be returned to the bookshelves. Open the latch. <laughs> Swing the pendulum harder. Having a good time, are we, little rodent? Sweet dreams! Ah! Did you fancy the vintage, my whiskered friend? Ding. She's more powerful than I thought. Looks like she tipped the wall candelabra to one side, too. Hmm, the angle of those candles. I get the feeling I've seen something very similar to that quite recently. Turn the valve. This poor mouse! Did we kill it? Oh, heavens! A blackout at a critical time like this! Of course, dim lights suit my story of love very well, but... I, myself, am not very fond of the dark. Oh. This chandelier just narrowly missed the back of my head! I love the thrill of romance, but I don't need these kinds of thrills. Thank you. Is she gonna drink that? I would love to light her hair on fire. What a wonderful atmosphere. Perfect for a clandestine meeting with the, in the dusky twilight. I don't exactly know how this situation came about, but I think I owe the rat an apology. The rat seems to be unconscious, but now that the room has changed into this, maybe I can use it somehow. Poor little rat. Turn the crank. Let's do it. Oop. What? Her hair didn't catch fire. What a naughty chandelier. That's lame. I want a refund. I want my money back. I mean, we're on to something. thought I don't know she managed to dodge like that who knew she was a dodging champion i'm starting to get annoyed let me try that again i'll get her this time will we you want me to try it again okay well, let's keep doing it oh, i don't think burning brighter does any good for me right now that's probably later
Maybe I need to do it quicker. Like when she's there. Oh. Me! Amelie! Amelie, help me! I guess I was doing it too late. Mama! I'm sorry, Mama. I'm too dizzy. I can't get up. I'm afraid I can't help you right now. Bitch. That's what you get. <laughs> Here is to the weakness of my darling angel. The chandelier is on there tighter than her wedding band. She won't be able to escape on her own. You're not gonna let me burn it brighter, game? Come on. Um, but I still need to light this candle somehow. If I recall, the novelist said she didn't like the dark. I don't want her thrashing around more. Better not put the lamp out. Or, okay. Um. All right. Well, this seems pretty fucked up, but here we are. What? What is going on here? Amelie, look! Do you see this thing? Please help! Oh, sorry. I'm too sick. I can't get out of bed. My head is spinning, so I guess you'll just have to stay up there spinning, too. Haha, <laughs> perfect. Looks like this lady won't be going anywhere for a while. Now the little girl can call her father. The only trouble is she can't reach it. I guess I'll just have to deliver it to her. Oh, that's right, the angle of those candles. I saw something very similar just recently, didn't I? God, this is absolute chaos. Swing harder. This mouse and this lady are swinging. This is the most amazing thing ever. But can somebody please get that mouse some cheese? That poor mouse did nothing wrong. His tail is on fire. Can the tail stop being on fire? What in the world is going on here? It's a ghost. It's a ghost. Okay, the mouse is okay. Oh, goody. Excuse me a minute while I call Papa, okay, Mama? I'll only be a minute. You call your Papa, girl. You earned that. Oh! Don't you dare, Amelie! I won't have it! Get me down! you of course it is silly what did you think but i heard oh, they said you were Ooh. no never mind it's nothing silly old papa happy birthday papa birthday oh right it was my birthday today wasn't it i'm sorry we couldn't celebrate tonight Thanks to mean old mama. Oh, your mean old mama. I mean your mother. What is she up to right now? Um, well. Well, she's certainly up, all right. 
my stubborn mother is kind of tied up at the moment. Get me down! She needs to be taught a lesson for causing us so much trouble. Okay, this girl is a little bit devious. A little bit worried. No, Amelie. I'm the one who was wrong. Huh? Could you tell your mother I'm sorry? What do you have to be sorry about? I was just about to make a terrible mistake. But it's all right now. Oh, okay. Wow, his whole face changed. You're still young. There's a lot I can't tell you right now. The job of Justice Minister is very complicated, you see. Okay. But just remember, you're always the most important thing to your mother and me. Did you do something naughty to your mother? If you did, I want you to apologize. I don't think I did anything. But okay, I'll apologize. That's a good girl. Okay, Papa. Have a good night. I love you. I love you too, Amelie. Good night, sweetheart. What the hell is going on? This family is too crazy. Um, Mama? I'm sorry. My goodness! Why the sudden change? I... I guess I was wrong about you. I didn't understand. Oh, Amelie. I thought all you ever did was write those weird novels. That makes me a little sad. Papa said the job of Justice Minister was complicated. Yes, your father's job is very, very complicated and difficult. That's why I couldn't talk to you. Talk to you about most of it. But you're right. I shouldn't treat you like such a little girl anymore. You're growing up after all. And I promise to stop calling your novels weird and try actually reading them. Um... What? Oh, uh... Maybe you'd better wait until you're a little older for that. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Amelie, if you're feeling a little more terrible toward your old mama, you think you could let me down now? You know, I would love to do that. But I'm just feeling too dizzy and sick right now. Oh. Tonight, on this holy of nights, holiest of nights, my deadline. It looks like the only thing pressing on me will be this chandelier. Here's to Papa and Mama's darling angel. Ding! All of a sudden, everybody is getting along again. It's such an abrupt change, I can't understand it. Is this what family is all about? In any case, the situation has changed dramatically now. I just hope the mysteries of me can be cleared up as quickly as the furrows on the minister's brows. I don't know where Camilla is, but at least now the justice minister's doubts are dispelled. I think I'll go back to his office where everybody is waiting for the prison van. minister's family now has their smiles and harmony back, but Camilla is still in the hands of the kidnappers. I decided to go back to the justice minister's office. Surprisingly, the minister's brow is still just as furrowed as ever. Quite unlike a father who has just learned his daughter is safe, he seems to still be in the depths of despair. The atmosphere in this room is very different now. It seems to have an air of unfocused anxiety. I get the feeling something big is going to happen. I just found out that my daughter is safe. I'd like to express my gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for my daughter's sake and for mine. No need to thank us, Mr. Minister. It was nothing. 
What did he do? <laughs> but one question. I can't help but notice. Your daughter is safe. And yet, you still look unhappy. How about a little smile for us? Oh! Of course, there is still the matter of the other kidnapping victim. But is that really the only thing that troubles you, Mr. Minister? Please, let me think in peace until the prison van arrives. I wonder if Lynn is at the park yet. Until we get her report, I guess I'll just have to wait here. This continued distress of the ministers, is there really something more to it? Like the inspector in white said? All right, we still have a little bit more time. Let's talk to this guy. It seems to me the justice of minister has some kind of big problem on his mind. Why don't you try talking to him instead of me? I don't even think he's ready to acknowledge my existence yet. He's an anxious fellow, yes, but I bet he knows when to accept the truth. Would his face be so furrowed otherwise? What does one have to do with the other? Okay, well, my bad. I'll go over here. Hello, Justice Minister. How about you finally admit I do exist? That thank you I expressed that was meant for you oh well thank you for thanking me you're a ghost aren't you and you have the power to control and manipulate people don't you not directly no i don't have that kind of power i can't control you we've actually known you know for quite a while now but I had no idea they were the powers of the dead, of ghosts. Known? Known about what? We knew about the existence of somebody who could control others. A manipulator. What's this? That's why your execution order caused me so much anguish, Detective Jowd. Mr. Minister, why don't you just tell us everything you know? Yes, I suppose I should. You need to hear it all. All about the huge mistake this foolish man made. The manipulator. There are some cases in this country right now that are under a top secret investigation. Of course, you wouldn't have known about them, Detective Jowd. Right, they don't share too much top secret information with the inmates in prison. There are three prisoners, including you, in the special prison you just escaped from. All three cases have certain points in common. They do, do they? Tell us more. The rock singer who leaked national secrets in his lyrics during a live TV broadcast. The curry-loving fellow who took the chief commissioner hostage at the Metro Police Department. Neither of these men had a motive for their crime, and both of their crimes were impossible. Impossible? The curry lover had no way of knowing how to infiltrate the commissioner's office, and the rock singer had no way of knowing the national secrets he leaked. The special investigation unit submitted an, investi an investigative report to them on me. They concluded that these men's criminal acts were not of their own volition. But how could that be? The theory the unit came up with was the existence of a manipulator. A manipulator, huh? That's when the special prison was established as a facility to research that theory. Oh man, this is getting... Woo! Some unknown power has been at work. These past several years, Inspector Cabanella has been studying these cases. He has, has he? Manipulating somebody into committing a criminal act, according to the inspector. The first case of its kind was a locked room murder involving our nation's best detective. Are you trying to say I was manipulated somehow into shooting Alma? 
I appreciate the theory, but unfortunately, I don't recall being controlled by anybody. It's just not possible to manipulate others' behavior like that. My powers certainly don't work on living creatures. That's what I thought when I first heard the theory too. However, I was seriously mistaken, and it proved to be a big mistake. What? The minister's mistake. You mentioned a mistake. Could you tell us about it? I suppose everybody here has the right to know. All right, fine. I'll speak out loud so that Minister Cabanella can hear this too. Shit. There's something I'd like the two of you to hear. It's about a mistake I made. Inspector Cabanella, when you first made that report about a manipulator, I'm afraid I didn't believe it at all. Impossible, I thought. Perfectly understandable, Mr. Minister. But I was wrong. That kind of power does exist. And I... I learned the truth of that firsthand. What's this? A month ago, I signed the order to carry out Detective Jowd's execution. However, that act wasn't of my own volition. I was being controlled. What? You never told me about this, Mr. Minister! a different kind of power what's going on this document what am i doing no i mustn't sign it no, 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 no. wait don't deliver that document That's when it started. That's when all of my fear, despair, and suffering began. Oh, and it, it caused such a, like, emotional and mental strain on him that it's, um, it affected his marriage, I think. Fear, despair, and suffering. At the time, it didn't even cross my mind that I had been manipulated and my memory of the event was only hazy at best. Hmm, so the memory of being manipulated doesn't clearly remain, eh? Signing execution orders is part of a justice minister's job. At the time, I just thought my psyche was rebelling against the task. But the next day, it dawned on me I remembered Inspector Cabanel's report on the existence of a manipulator. As a minister of justice, I couldn't admit what had happened to me. I only signed the execution order because I was being controlled. If something like that got out, this nation's judicial system would crumble. Besides, I had no evidence to present that I had actually been controlled. So in the end, I couldn't admit to anybody what had happened. Hmm, I suppose, but it sounds a bit like an excuse. You should have at least told us, Mr. Minister. Yes, yes, I know. I should have. I was running away from the problem. And then my wife found out I was worried about something. Well, if you go around with an expression like that, I guess it's bound to happen. I explained it to her and she was dead set against the way I was handling it. If you don't, if you don't withdraw that order and tell everyone the truth immediately, I'm moving out. 
so that's why oh shit she knew that he he was sending a, an innocent man to or at least that he he didn't it, like he wasn't the one who wanted to sign that at the very least that someone else got him to do it well that paints that lady in a very different light but she's still weird <laughs> she's still a little freaky freaky <laughs> like yeah we could side with her shamurai but she's still a little freaky deaky <laughs> and then with the kidnapping tonight with it thrust under my nose like that i could no longer deny my mistake This manipulator comes upon us from somewhere unseen. That's why I've been keeping my distance from everybody. So that's why you've been telling people to stay back. So there's somebody else besides me with the powers of the dead. I'm fine with that. After all, I already knew about a certain desk lamp. What I'm not fine with is the fact that that person can control and manipulate living creatures. It's certainly not something I can do. Apparently, different ghosts get different ghost tricks. But I never imagined that tonight I would find out where this kind of power comes from. Where does it come from? <gasps> The guy who was murdered 10 years ago by Jowd. Inspector Cabanella, this manipulator is a ghost, a departed spirit. A spirit? As a matter of fact, there's a ghost talking to us right now. What? What did you say? Jowd! Don't tell me you can hear this ghost too! I'd say the only person who can't hear him is you, but we can fix that by just murdering you real quick. Spirit? Ghost? Gods in heaven. Excuse me, Mr. Minister. I suddenly have some urgent business to attend to. I recommend you think long and hard before making your final decisions, sir. He's and he's gone. Inspector! This is Lynn! I'm at the park! We've been waiting to hear from you. Have you found the evidence? Well, uh, the situation here is kind of difficult to explain. Sissel, if you're there, come to the park immediately! This music is so good. It looks like your help is needed, Sissel. Yeah, I guess so, huh? Lynn calls, and I oblige. I take off toward Temsic Park, a place where clearly something big is taking place. The manipulator, the person whose very existence sheds new light on everything. Detective Jowd's crime, the execution orders, and even my own death. Could it be? Could Lynn have been manipulated into shooting me? Oh, I didn't even think about that. I, I forgot. I wasn't thinking about her shooting him, like, for the past stream and a half. 